Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.14, and in this lesson, I'm going to go over the parameters for the eSnare creation project. I'll start by generating out our random numbers yet again so I know what devices I have access to. And at the end of the video, I'm going to try and talk yet again about why something like this can be so helpful. I know that these videos are the ones that get the fewest amount of views, and I'm sure that those of you who watch these videos have probably seen them all. But I'm just going to talk about a few more reasons why something like this can be very helpful, whether you're a beginner or if you've been producing music for 15 or 20 years. So let's go in and quickly generate these things. We know that we have access to the eSnare. You have access to the tool and the peak limiter. And now we're going to randomize five effects. So from one to 26, let's just generate out a few here at the start to make sure that nothing is funky. And now let's begin. Okay, so first one I got is 25. That's the uh, plugin saturator I have. So if you guys haven't been following along, you can actually go in here and set this from one to 23 and those will be all of your Bitwig devices. All right, so let's generate out another one. 11. That is the EQ5, very cool. 26, interesting. So I have a couple of different saturation options here. Four, which is the comb. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have one more we're going to generate. And that's number seven, which is the delay two. Okay, very cool. That's a really awesome combination there. I can't wait to use all of those. All right, let's go ahead and generate out a container. So one to six, if we hit five, we have to skip that. I'm going to put in one to six. I'm going to just generate this out a few times before starting. All right, here we go. Let's generate it. Okay, I got a six which is the XY effect. And now we have one to three, which is gonna determine what modulator we can use. So I'm gonna do the same thing yet again, just to try to clear this out and here we go. All right, so I got the number one, which is the audio mod. Very cool, this is gonna be a pretty interesting composition. And last but not least, let's generate one more at random. This is the wild card. This is the one that we have to use. So from one to 35, I'll generate one and then I'll generate another. Here we go, 22, which is the transient controller. Okay, and I'll just uh, star this one up so I realize this is that one. Perfect. Okay, last but not least, we have to figure out how much time we have. Is it gonna be one, two, three, or four hours? So I'll generate out a number for that. And again, I'll let it generate something and hit it again. I got two for the second straight time. All right, so two is what we're going to be using. Remember, if you guys want, you can go to random.org and you can randomate out your own for this. And it, that's totally fine, that's totally okay. So this is what I'm gonna have access to when I sit down to make my e-snare creation. I have a comb filter, the delay two, the EQ5, the transient controller, the IVGI, the tall tube, the XY effect, and the audio mod. Remember, if you don't have those plugins, they are freeware, but if you've decided to just stick with the Bitwig stuff, which is totally okay, in fact, I really, could care less which way you want to go on that. Um, remember to just generate out from 1 to 23 in that case. And uh, that's what we're going to be using. And we have two hours yet again. So in the other video for the E-clap, I guess it was, we had two hours for that. And I emphasize that you need to really sit down and think about what you're going to do in advance. If you don't sit down and think about what you're going to do in advance, that two hours goes by really, really quickly. So do some brainstorming. That way, when you finally open up Bitwig and decide to go for it, you're ready to go. It's totally fine to open up Bitwig in advance and play around with some a few ideas before you actually sit down and choose to get started. So yet again, why is something like this really, really helpful? I think for people just starting out, this can be very helpful because it gives them a path to take. 
They know their parameters. They know that there's a certain time on the clock and it's gonna be a great opportunity for you to go in there and focus on something. I would say that 85% of people who get a digital audio workstation, who buy something like Bitwig Studio, open it up a few times and really struggle to ever actually make something because there's just so many choices and because they have no idea where to start. This is gonna be something very helpful. It's gonna let you know where you need to start and what you need to accomplish. For people who are more advanced who have been doing this for a long time and specifically for people who've maybe gone through a curriculum in college or in high school, it's really easy for those four years to be focused on something like photography or painting or music making or filmmaking. And then when you leave school and you know those jobs, people aren't just handing those out left and right, you get pretty discouraged. And so you kind of quit and you give up on that particular art form. Also, you start to have time to do other things. And would you rather take a nap or make music or paint? You know, a lot of times I'd probably rather take a nap, but I try to force myself to get in there and make music whenever I have the time to do so. So part of it is time management. And also when you're in school, you're given very specific tasks and you're told, okay, what do I need to focus on for this week? What do I need to present to the class? So there's that burden of expectation. When you're on your own and you have all of these other choices and things you can do, it makes getting in there and working on something very difficult. So even for me sometimes when I'm not feeling incredibly inspired or I'm not actually working on a full composition, I'll go in and do one of these little creation, jogging, mind activities so that in the future I might come up with an idea for a full range composition. Normally, if I do something like this, I don't release it anywhere. It doesn't get out. I usually just delete it and trash it when I'm done. But for us, because we're trying to learn together, I'm letting you listen to what I come up with because the fact is two hours is such a short amount of time to make a full composition. You're going to make stuff and you're going to be like, oh, that really sucked. And that's okay because at least you've spent that two hours focused in and working on something. It's totally fine to open up the software and just screw around for a few hours. I do that all the time, but it's not going to um, tap into the same areas of your brain that you're going to tap into when you're actually focused on trying to make something start to finish. And the last point is habit forming. Okay, so a lot of times for us as human beings, we need a habit. We need something that we do time and time again. There's a reason why mix engineers and mastering engineers are so good at what they do. And even producers and engineers who sit in some of these big studios and are required to come up with some making some of these sounds and songwriters, it's because they do it every single day. It's a habit. If they weren't to do it, they'd feel like something was missing. For beginners just starting out, that habit hasn't been formed yet. You need to form this habit of making music every single day to a point where if you don't make music, you feel like there's a void, you feel like there's something missing. And again, you're not gonna be able to just go into the studio and crank out a top 20 hit the first time. It's a very slow and painful growing process. Everybody is capable of it. Every single person is capable of making great music, but a, the hardest part is just getting into that habit, is getting yourself in there and working on something every single day. And although an e-snare creation isn't gonna sound as cool as the latest dubstep track, at least you're getting in there and making something and the expectation doesn't have to be so high because look, this is what you're limited to. It's so few things, there's no reason for there to be that high a burden of expectation on yourself. Okay, so I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you guys. I'd love to hear what you're able to come up with. You don't have to do these if you don't want to, but I think for those of you, if you've been doing this for 15 years and you're starting to lose some of that inspiration, these little creation brain activities are uh, very helpful as well. So if you're just starting out or you've been doing this for a long time, I think this can help quite a bit if you're struggling to make things. If you're not struggling to make things right now, don't do it, as simple as that. Thank you so much for watching and you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.